Well, the sun is setting up here in Wisconsin. As you can see, the sky is perfectly clear. It's going to be a cold one. Oh, let me set the camera up here real quick. I'll tell you what's going on. All right. I rolled into Schofield uh, this morning. I was going to leave out a little early, get here, try to get offloaded early this morning. Um, and I'm glad I waited. I talked to a couple other drivers, and, and, and the drivers are usually pretty helpful. And I walked over, and a guy had a box truck. And the ice was packed this thick. Slush had frozen all under his truck everywhere. Probably 2,000 pounds of ice under this truck and gravel, you know, slush. And I talked to him, and he's like, dude, if you can wait a couple hours, I would. So I decided, I had time, um, and I said, you know what, I'm... I am just going to wait. Um, like I said, Maverick stress is safety over everything. I mean, they really do. Uh, the bad part is that sometimes they want to sell you things that are safety that aren't safety, which is the worst thing you can do. Um, for many years, I was the non-commissioned officer in charge of safety in, in the Air Force where I was where I worked at in the maintenance squadron. And, and the first thing you, if you're, if you're in that, the first thing you need to understand is safety can't be overblown to the point you can't do your job with the equipment and the uh, regulations they put upon you. And the Air Force, if you followed every single guideline the Air Force had, there is no physical way to do your job. It has got it got that bad. And everybody wants to yell at OSHA, but OSHA does not ever write a regulation. OSHA only enforces regulations written by the Mining Institute and electrical groups. I don't, I don't know what all they are. I could look them up, but you can too. They write those regulations, and um, OSHA enforces the regulations. Okay. Well, then the Air Force decided to come along and build their own set of regulations. I think they're finally getting away from that now because they got really stupid. And I understand that the Air Force does need their own set of regulations because, you know what, in the common world, we don't carry bombs. Uh, we don't shoot bullets. We don't fire tanks. So the militaries, they need their own set of safety programs, but they were overwriting what everybody else had in the industry. So, I mean, you take a hard hat. You take my Maverick hard hat, okay? Um... It's easy to put on, it's easy to wear. That's where safety needs to be. Safety needs to not be complicated at all. Uh, it needs to be something that is readily available, easy to use. The harder you make it, the worse it is. So, back to what I was saying. It was really icy this morning, I decided to park. Or I decided not to leave uh, uh, as early as I was going to. Because A, there's nothing here worth me getting hurt over, or killed over, or killing or hurting somebody else. If I call Maverick and I tell Maverick Transportation, it's too icy, I'm not rolling, they're going to say, okay, stay with us and let us know when we need to reschedule for. They're not going to make me haul this load in the crap. And guess what? You know, the constant need, if I got to delivery and said, listen, man, it was just too icy, I'd have been here five hours ago, they're not going to have heartburn with it, you know. Um, so I decided just to sit and I get up the road and there's cars in ditches. Um more than one car had gone into the ditch and rolled. One was a semi flopped on its side, and, and, and you know how they cut the ditch lines. This was all cut out of rocks, so this semi went into those rocks, and, and the driver had to have gotten hurt. I don't think he got killed, but, man, it just destroyed the tractor, the trailer. It was still sitting there, and, and what they do up here is when they, because of the weather, they actually have crossing gates to keep you off the interstate like you would off from crossing the railroad track. And gives, and I think they do that, they close it, then they can go out there and clean it, clean it, clean it, then open it all up. Um, safer for the driver, safer for the plow operators, etc. cetera. Um, but they go and they look at the car. If the people, if they got the people out or the people have gone home or somebody's picked them up game, they wrap like caution tape, something like that around the car. So the next state trooper, the next crew that comes through, don't stop and look at that car. They know that car has already been looked at. So here's these cars just, you know, and, um, the sun never came out for hours. It was just overcast. But the radiant heat, you know, I, 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 the water was actually flowing through the parking lot where the snow was melting. But it was still 26, 28 degrees. Tonight it's going to be 20. And I, I know it's going to be cold because I went to the Walmart and the polar bears and the snowmen were buying space heaters. <laughs> so 
Um, I have three times now written and recorded the pay for performance package. But the problem is, is holding the GoPro and trying to use, you know, trying to write on a tablet and, and it's all there. It's all concise, but it's just shaky. And I just figured, you know what, you guys sitting at home watching this would just, you know. So I decided to try it a fourth time, maybe a different way. Maybe just explain it and not even write it out. I don't know. Um, one of the things that's definitely fuel mileage, um, I decided to... Uh, I had, I had said I had decided to let the truck drive itself. In other words, I let the cruise control, and it has a plus five and a minus four on the dashboard. So what it'll do is it'll, if you're, if you got it set for 65 at 70, it's going to start applying the, the engine brake, and then after that, so it'll, it'll actually apply the tractor brakes. And keep your feet flat, flat on the floor. Sometimes you need to help it out, give it a little more braking so you don't speed him. Um, but as you start to go up a grade and you get near the top of the grade, it will let off and drop down four miles an hour below. It expects you to have enough momentum maybe to get over the top and down. But then it won't, as you're going down the grade, it won't accelerate. And if you go up a grade in your level, it might be a half a mile, three quarters of a mile before it accelerates. Well, I don't have all day to wait to run around at 61 mile an hour. I, I Today I did. Yesterday I did. So I let the truck do it. Um, and you pay for performance, one of them is fuel mileage, miles per gallon. And it's out of your control. You, th you think you control part of it, but I let the truck drive today. Yesterday I got 7.9, so I'm actually maxed out on my pay for performance on that. That's what I need to get. Today I got 7.6 because I had a headwind and I had hills. So once I explain the pay for performance totally, you'll go, what? Because it wasn't, it wasn't, put together with uh, a lot of thought. I don't think, my opinion, you know what to say about opinions, uh, to really reward the driver as much as maybe it was to get drivers to come and drive for them. And that's okay, because there's a lot of people out there getting their six cents per mile, max pay for performance. But it all depends, there's so many factors involved uh, where you run. If I could run out through Kansas and Oklahoma and out that way all the time, oh yeah, I'd be maxed. But I end up coming out of Tennessee and Pennsylvania, North Carolina. I have to climb all through those mountains. Um, so miles per gallon shouldn't even be in it. But I'll discuss the whole pay for performance. Once I figure out how to do it where I don't give y'all like epileptic fits, you know. <laughs> but uh, Schofield, very pretty up here in Wisconsin. It's going to be damn cold tonight. I'm trying to get off load tonight. It is, um, well, what time is it? I don't even know five o'clock something like that uh yeah five fifty six six o'clock if not i offload at six o'clock in the morning i've already got my other load it's taking me home um i was hoping to get a home day home early with it but five hours down to get the load and change and then six hours sorry about that six hours from where i'm picking it up to where i'm dropping it off so i would be right on the cusp of making it um but we'll see and we'll let you know all right, we're actually going for the sixth, number six on uh, presenting you guys, showing you guys the PFP. Um, the rest of them are just, I'm trying to hold the camera and it's too jiggly and it's just, uh, it would end up being a mess. Uh, your top one there is miles per day, then miles per gallon, idle percent, your service failure. I guess you can kind of read down through there and see them. Um, three, the top three, I do not believe should even be on the list that pay for performance. Um, Miles per day is totally outside of your control. Um, you get a load. It tells you when you pick it up, when you can deliver it, when, you're, when you are to deliver it. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, COVID killed the drivers because our miles per day went down. So therefore our PFP went down. So every, mile, every load you made, you actually got paid less on. Okay. Um, It also, if you go home for vacation, I'm taking six days off, that's zero miles per day. That goes right against you. So yeah, okay, Maverick gives you one day for every week you're out off. If you use them, it ends up costing you in the end. To me, that makes absolutely no sense to do, that, do it in that manner. And I understand, okay, the truck's not running, the truck's not making company. Why give me a day off? Why not just tell all your drivers, listen, you gotta stay out in your truck constantly 
live through it, suck it up, whatever. But anyhow, the next one is miles per gallon. I decided to let the truck drive itself for one day and then, uh, or for two days in a row. One day I got 7.9, okay? My target is 7.85. The next day I got into some hills and dales and um, <clears throat> a headwind coming up here to Schofield and I got 7.6, okay? I can't control that. I can't, there's just no way for me to control miles per gallon because even when I let the truck drive itself, I had a 7.9 and to get points is 7.85, you're only talking less than a, what, what is that, a, a fifth? Well, less than a half, let's just call it less than a half mile per gallon difference. But then the next day I turn around, got a 7.6, letting the truck do its own thing. Um, so miles per gallon, um, totally out of your control. Shouldn't even be on the list. Idle percentage, um, somewhat within your control, mostly outside your control, okay? My idle percent is 3.6, and as you can see there, I'm allowed to go to 8. 8%, um, I'm sorry, I'm allowed to go to 6% <clears throat> for 8 points. Uh, like I said, my idle percent is 3.6. And a lot of that is because I end up running recaps. So I don't burn up all my 70s. So the next week I get that back. So I try to run recaps all the time. And I got good batteries, so I really can get by without idling the truck. Um, my 16 the heater broke. I had to idle the truck a lot. My idle percent went down, and my fleet manager didn't help me out with that. Even though I was out for like four days idling the truck every night for you know, eight hours a night, just try to keep warm in the truck. So that came right out of my pocket on PFP. <clears throat> and as you idle too, uh, like doing a 34, a reset, your heater burns fuel, not a lot, but as your engines run and charging the batteries, it also eats fuel. So there goes your miles per gallon down also. And your miles per day, if you're doing a, like I, I may have said it, as you're doing a 34, you get hung out here, you're sitting there doing 34 hour break, DOT required, making zero miles. Guess what? There goes your miles per day. So just doing your job hurts your idle percentage miles per gallon, you know, and your miles per day can suffer. Um, let's, let's show you where I'm at real quick. Uh, right now I'm rocking. It's gonna be crap when I come back from my six days off. You, you know, that says 100 points, but you can get over 100 points um, by getting your stuff done the way you should get it done, getting your washes done on time, etc. cetera. Um, I had a 2016 right there. I only did, I averaged 208 miles a day because the truck was always broke, always. Um, my idle percentage has pretty much been the same because it was always sitting at the damn terminal plugged in. Um, outer route, I've always been good on outer route. I've always got max max points on outer route. There's three, 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 three point four, three point oh. So, you know, I'm averaging good on outer route. But my 2016 truck was always broke, always in a shop, no miles per day, you know, uh, miles per gallon was okay for a 16, but Here's where I'm at now with the 21, 105.7 points, max PFP. It is achievable, but it ain't achievable for long. Uh, I need to get 420 miles a day. I've been averaging 444 miles per gallon. I need 7.85, I got 8.38, and my idle percent, 3.6, and I got 6. So that's PFP. That's the heartburn I have with it. Um, and as I've said before, um, you know, I just show you what I experience and I, I let you know how I feel and it's my opinion and you know what they say about opinions. This is a kid's show. We're not going to talk about it, but, uh, I think Maverick, uh, has a pretty good PFP program. I think they should take the top three off and forget about it because during COVID it killed the drivers. Uh, I think I did the math on two runs. I made five dollars and some odd cents an hour. Minimum wage in Ohio is eight something. I think for that month I could have worked for McDonald's, flipping fries, been home every night, made the same amount of money. Take the good with the bad. 
And I'd like to take the good with the bad, but, uh, you know, they had taken away the week guarantee and the weekend guarantee. And, it, and um, the honorable thing to do would be, hey, you guys made these loads. You stayed with us. You didn't jump ship. Um, we're going to go back into books, find out who didn't make their 1000 a week, their 850 a weekend, and pay us back. Because right now, Freight is just screaming. They're making fist over hand over money over, you know, hand over fist. Something. They're doing that thing. Whatever that sound like bite you know the thing but anyhow um at the 401k match i don't believe is back yet and freight is just screaming i mean it's, it's just running if i wanted to stay out here i could make a lot of money but you know i ain't married to this truck um and uh my dog misses me family misses me mom misses me i'm not sure about my grandbaby she's too young yet but she probably misses me too but anyhow, there's the PFB. I hope that hit hit where I needed it to be so you guys would understand how that works and, and, and the issues with it.